Hello, welcome to SuperCloud 3. This is our third installment of SuperCloud, our coverage where we talk about the next generation of cloud. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, a third installment. We're doing these SuperClouds. We've got a big event maybe coming up. Great to see you. Hey, John. Great to be here in Palo Alto, <laughs> live in the studio. So this is security plus AI. This is a different focus on SuperCloud this year. This seg segment, security and AI, two big things going on together. You know, in 2021, John, you and I sort of lay down this concept of the super cloud. It was kind of interesting. It was sort of tongue in cheek at the time. We got a lot of heat for it. But then in last August, we did super cloud one. It was really to define the concept, really try to flesh out the definition and test the validity of it, and which we did. And, and then of course, uh, this January, we kicked off SuperCloud 2, which was all about the practitioners. We had Walmart, we had Saks, we had Western Union, and a number of others. And it was all about sharing data across the cloud. And of course, you know, this is the year of AI. So you got to talk about AI meets security. It's just in the generative AI story has totally impacted our agenda uh, across the world. I think we're going to have an AI component in every SuperCloud conversation. It's just accelerated onto the scene so big. It's changed the game, it's changed the makeup, uh, even the conversation around the physical layer all the way up to the applications we've covered on our cube pod uh, and many other conversations. And it's been very interesting how that's changed the cloud scale next gen conversation because now you see the cloud players talking about Gen AI in addition to the higher level services they've been adding on. So, you know, that's going to change the conversation. And again, this super cloud three continues the tradition momentum. We have great names. We have the co-founder of Cloudflare. Doug Merritt's going to keep opening keynote. He's going to come out of retirement. He's now the CEO of Aviatrix, a very new company positioned for the multi-cloud, multiple environment. We got George Kurtz from CrowdStrike, Zscaler, VMware. Uh, Dell, Cisco, Snowflake, Laceworks, Okta, the list goes on and on. These are the industry leaders as, and practitioners coming in to talk about what this next generation is about. And it's not just about being an IT person with a vendor. SuperCloud's an environment now, Dave, where people are looking at their careers and saying, this is next generation IT, this is next generation data, this is next generation infrastructure, next generation cloud, next generation data, next generation applications and people's careers are going to be involved in SuperCloud and we're going to unpack that this week. So SuperCloud is of course all about taking advantage of the best of breed of services across clouds, creating that abstraction layer and simplifying the complex. And now you inject AI into the equation and it opens up a whole new realm of possibility. Almost to affirm, John, when we talk to organizations out there, whether they're buyers or sellers, <clears throat> virtually everybody's saying, well, we've been doing AI for a long, long time. And so one of the things that we, we like to do here in theCUBE is try to squint through, okay, what's really AI? What's machine learning? What's true AI? What's AI washing? I mean, everybody literally is using AI in some way, shape or form. And then what's the right application for AI? We talked to Jeff Jonas last week and we said, look, if, if you're using generative AI and you want to get the same answer week after week, day after day and explainability, you're using it wrong. You should be using it for ideation and other things. Okay, so there's a lot, we're just getting started. There's so much more to open up. So today we're going to really dig into it today and tomorrow, the application of AI in security. I mean, I'm curious you know, what people think. Who's going to ultimately benefit more from AI? Is it going to be the attackers or the defenders and how that's all going to play out? That's one of the many questions that we have today. And what's interesting too, in all the conversations we've had coming into this, um, it's the offense versus the defense. The offense meaning the adversaries are pushing hard. They're winning the game and everyone's playing defense and so is the best offense a better defense? You have to put more points on the board, as we say in football. Uh, all, all excellent, David. And the other thing is the growth side too. If you look at the market, and I want to get your thoughts as we, get in, as we unpack this before we kick off, is the growth side for enterprises and startups and the financial markets is who's got the right equation in the super cloud in this new market? You kind of have winners and losers. We kind of got a tailwind on one hand with AI and the super cloud, and you got a headwind with the old models of IT and technology. And you're seeing the capital markets, startups running out of runway, you got funding environments tight right now. On one hand, you got great funding. On the other hand, you don't. So that's a growth issue. How do you grow this market? Well, in, in you know, pre the generative AI, chat GPT, the, the super cloud looked like a, a great opportunity and it still is for people, but the equation has now changed. Because to your earlier point, you had Amazon kind of in the lead with SageMaker and a lot of these other AI tools. And then Microsoft basically cut the line with the, the open AI deal that it did. And so it sort of bought its way into the, to the lead. And of course you got Google and the whole code, code red thing. But the point is the, 
The hyperscalers have all dominated in the AI conversation and they've put a lot of investments in there. And he had other guys like Databricks and some other specialists like Hugging Face and Anthropic sort of you know, bouncing around. But the, but the hyperscalers have a lot of momentum in AI. We're going to show some data. You know, AI kind of during the pandemic was one of the top four in terms of spending momentum, momentum according to the ETR data. We'll show some of that a little later. <clears throat> and then it sort of died down you know, as the macro, macroeconomic headwinds hit, well, boy, it's back up and to the right again. And, and so, it, but, the, but the positions have changed, you know, it was AWS, all tides are rising, are rising all ships, but the positions have changed. AWS was kind of number one, now it's like Microsoft, and sort of narrative in the industry, AWS is playing a little defense and then going on the offense. I mean, you've talked to, we got Matt Garman yeah, we tomorrow got, we got in an exclusive, and so there's really interesting changing dynamics in the chessboard. Yeah, and tomorrow uh, we got a video exclusive <clears throat> with Matt Garman who formerly ran EC2, so he knows his tech, he knows what's going on on the compute side, he's running sales and market for AWS, they have a master plan, we're going to hear from them. They're definitely still in the lead, no doubt about, they get the best cloud right now. Amazon is in the head, Azure's But are they up. heading AI? AI, they're, they're on their heels because they, they're losing the narrative battle. Microsoft absolutely destroying them, in my opinion. On um, the PR side, there's no, no contest. I mean, they just, with open AI, they've, just, they've been surging ahead. Amazon's playing catch up and, and they're going to slowly chip away at it. But I think the market for the cloud, we'll, we'll get into it um, later, but the market for the cloud for AI is coming. The builders are the coders right now. They're building the apps, the hosting providers, AKA the hardware, Amazon, will probably kick into gear once we have a tsunami of, of real customers coming in. And I would say right now, not in revenue terms, but in mind share terms, I would say open AI is by far number one. And of course you've got Microsoft and open, open AI as you know, in, in bed together. So really those two have sort of catapulted themselves into lead, but as we said earlier, it's really early days and Amazon is a great story from silicon all the way up you know, through the stack. Well, let's kick this off. Let's get into some of the data. I know you got um, some stuff to share on SuperCloud 3 um, to kick this off, to set the foundation as we get this agenda going. What's the analysis? What is the security plus AI story? So we have a data partner called Enterprise Technology Research. And, and, and if you bring up the, the, the slide that shows the sector positions here, this is their, their entire taxonomy. So it ranges from you know, every sector, uh, from, from storage to servers. And you can see here on this slide, you can see that the, the, during the pandemic, there were four categories that were top in terms of spending momentum. So it's a measurement of the percent of customers that are spending more on a technology platform. So you had AI, containers, cloud, and RPA. And you look what's happened here. It sort of bottomed, it hit the nadir in, in 2022, and then the month before ChatGPT was announced, it hit the bottom. And then all of a sudden it shot up to the right. So AI is now number one. You can see cloud computing is still you know, super high. Now look on the right here, you see information security. It's very penetrated. This, this horizontal axis is penetration in the market. So you can see security is highly penetrated. AI not so much, but the, the vertical axis is all spending momentum. And so now you've got AI meets security. So you have a big market that's mature and you got a new market that's immature and hot coming together to solve problems. Yeah, and, and, we, and one of the things about SuperCloud, as we said from the first uh, edition of our session, now we're on our third, is data has been the consistent theme of all of our super clouds. Of course, it's been you know, multiple environments, but that abstraction layer across environments really is not just compute and workload, but it's data underneath it. At the end of the day, the security is a data problem and you're starting to see kind of data fusion came up a lot in our pre conversations going at the event. And as you said, Dave, data and chat GPT showed the world that AI and generating AI capabilities will have an impact on the low hanging fruit for use cases and security. So, you know, I'm expecting that the security to accelerate on the platform side and in the point solutions as well, but mostly on the platform side with uh, security. So another quick data point here that we can show you, which is that this ETR is a methodology called net score and it just shows the, the granularity, essentially who's spending more, who's spending less. And so you can see here in this slide that the, the, the greens are spending more the, the gray is flat spending, the reds are spending less. And you can see again, where AI bottomed in October of 2022, right before ChatGPT, and look at the line, that blue line is spending momentum, up and to the right, right after ChatGPT is announced, that yellow line is market penetration, again, up and to the right. So, you know, this data doesn't surprise you, but it does quantify the market impact. 
and OpenAI is top of mind for everybody, as is Microsoft. Of course, Google and Amazon, it's rising their penetration as well, even though the positions of the leaders have changed. <laughs> it's funny, people have been calling it closed AI because open source has gotten so much momentum since uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT, uh, a lot more open source modules, LLMs happening. So interesting, interesting dynamic there. What does that data tell you? What's, what's your takeaway? So I think that people, you know, normally when you see market, you know, markets enter a hype cycle, normally adoption and spending comes way after the hype. But it seems like with AI, the, the hype and the spending are aligned. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And so you've got the hype cycle and you've got people now, I think there's still a lot of experimentation, but people are rushing, it's like a gold rush. Wow, we're going to get cut out if we don't invest. It's interesting, you know, we've been covering digital transformation, that, that, that buzzword, it's become cliche. It's now called business transformation, but if you believe that digital transformation is digitizing business in the world, then everything's data, and if everything's data, then you're going to have a data challenge. If you have a data challenge, AI helps solve that. So to me, I think the confluence of next generation cloud scale applications and generative AI has hit, the, hit the, the lucky strike here, and I think that's a growth curve combined with a hype curve. So, you know, you got hype and growth at the same time, just the timing of the perfect storm of, of innovation. I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like it. And you got the power plays with the cloud fully available, with full elasticity on resource. So, you know, if you got elasticity of resource, a robust developer environment with open source combined with now automation and generative AI, you have the perfect storm. Uh, for innovation. This is the super cloud. This is why I like this multiple environment. And we haven't even gone to the intelligent edge. If you look at the industrial IOT market from critical infrastructure, Dave, to just wearables, you're going to have an edge that's going to completely uh, be transformed by AI and data. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the scale of this uh, takes off. So I want to give you one more data point. We have AI meets cloud security. So we, we cut the ETR data amongst 574 uh, firms that are AI accounts, okay? And we said, all right, give us anybody with the mentions over 100 and cross that with security. So the vertical axis here is spending momentum. The horizontal axis is penetration. That red dotted line is highly, highly uh, uh, elevated spending momentum. And you can see here, look at Microsoft up and to the right as it always is in these things, but you got Zscaler, Okta, CrowdStrike, and Palo Alto Networks, all those guys are coming on SuperCloud, all above that 40% mark. And then you see Cisco, which is quite a bit to the right, but doesn't have that spending momentum. John, we're going to have uh, G2 Patel uh, and Tom Gillis on. They got some work to do, but it's still, they got a $4 billion business there. I got into a little kerfuffle with Keith Townsend uh, <laughs> during Cisco Live. He goes, oh, they're not a security vendor. I go, they have $4 billion security business. Not a quarter, is that they, per year? But that, a billion dollar a quarter, but they don't have the spending momentum of those others that we mentioned. And then of course, a little below that, you see Cloudflare, we're going to have Matthew Prince on. Okay, so he's very outspoken, loves to talk about, you know, how their cloud, their super cloud, he calls it, is the winning formula. So yep. a lot of the winners that you see here, and if, if, you, if you reduce that end to folks less than 100 mentions, this chart becomes impossible to read because there's so many security vendors out there. It's such a crowded market. It's interesting, you know, we hear all kinds of hype. You got to be data first, you know, all this kind of, be, you know, cloud first. If you're not a networking and security company, I don't think, or data company, you're not going to be, in business. I think, you know, the network is the security. I think what a security company looks like is going to be extinguished soon. I think that's going to be a, a scene where everyone has to be a security company from day one. And think about it. I mean, Cisco, okay, 4 billion, but the network is secure. <laughs> so, so let's, you know, we got Cloudflare coming in talking about the network is security. The future lies with AI enabled security analysis from uh, CrowdStrike. And, you know, and, and Cisco has got a golden opportunity. So I think from a revenue standpoint, yeah, they might be low, but network, data are two areas that are hot for security right now. One of the things I want to explore today and tomorrow is how people are using AI, how they're applying it, and, and what about generative AI? I mean, I see generative AI as a great way to get ideation as to how to hack a network, you know, if you're a bad guy. But how are you using generative AI? Are organizations using generative AI to defend? And if so, how? Because it's generative. So the answers change. It, it, it hallucinates, you know, you hear all about that. So there are other forms of AI, I think, yeah. that, that security companies and networking companies are applying, and I want to learn more about that to really understand how practitioners can take advantage of it. Are they actually going to actually even see it? Is it going to be buried inside? 
Uh, obviously, they can use AI to help prioritize, you know, to help remediate, to help identify uh, flaws in the network and their security, which is not up to date, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to dig into that a little bit and really yeah. learn what, where the value is for the customers. Yeah, and I'm interested in learning more about how security can be democratized because right now, like data science in the early days, to do security really well, you got to be kind of alpha, you got to be totally peaked on the, on the technology. You really can't kind of wade yourself into the, 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 the shallow end of the pool here. You got to really know your stuff. You can't not know security from day one and because the adversaries are strong. And then the application market's going to be interesting to watch how the applications and platforms emerge. So platforms versus tools always comes up, board level conversations, culture, um, security and data is going to be really interesting. I think the other thing that we really want to explore is, is this notion of zero trust. Everybody talks about it, it's the big buzzword. Every CISO is on a path, he or she, to zero, a zero trust architecture, but it's hard. <laughs> right, it's, it's been a difficult journey. Why has it been so hard and will AI make it easier and accelerate yeah. that journey? I mean, I don't even know what zero trust means these days. It means so many different things. It'd be interesting to get the perspective. Okay, SuperCloud 3, we've got a great lineup. Again, two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We've got live performances coming into the studio here in Palo Alto, this is the Cube Studios. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We're going to have ongoing coverage live here in Palo Alto. Stay with us for our next guest, Doug Merritt. Coming out of retirement now, the CEO of AVH is going to come on the Cube and tell us what he's up to. Looking forward to talking to him.